What is your take on consciousness? I'm for it. Okay, you're for it. <laughs> okay. I mean, consciousness is such a weird word because I didn't study consciousness yeah. at MIT. And, you know, it, it can't really be studied or, def I mean, it can be defined, but it can't be measured. Yeah. We kind of all recognize it's important. Maybe like a spiritual practice is important, but like where does it sit? With you all know, these ideas? It, it's so hard because we scientists are trained to study the objective things that we can all look at and measure. And we're not particularly good at turning inward and examining the, the subjective world. And, and the weird thing, or the hard thing, I should really say, about the subjective world is, by definition, I only have access to my own. I don't have access to your subjective conscious awareness. So I don't even know if your conscious awareness is really like mine. I assume that it is, we're made of the same kind of stuff, we have roughly the same kinds of experiences in planet Earth, and so I conjecture that you have an inner voice inside your head sometimes talks to you. I conjecture that you experience love and wonder and, and thrill and all that stuff, but that's just conjecture. I can't get inside your head, and therefore it's a different kind of puzzle understanding conscious awareness because we only have access to our own. Okay. Is it something we'll ever understand or measure, do you I, believe? I do think so. I do think that we will one day understand consciousness as simply the byproduct of information processing in the brain. And I've said this for a long time, and I need to qualify it by the following notion. Years ago, when I would say that, it was based on a just a gut feel that there's nothing more in the world than the ingredients and the laws, and therefore this thing is nothing more than those particles acted on by physical law, and therefore it's got to be that the inner sensation emerges from the particles moving in the right way. I didn't fully appreciate the subtlety of the problem when I first started saying things like this, say, 20 years ago. In the intervening years, I've thought, much more carefully about the problems of consciousness, much more deeply about other theories that people have put forward. And so I feel like I've broadened out my understanding of the, the difficulty of explaining this inner world emerging from particles that don't have an inner world. I mean, that's like, that's a real puzzle. Yeah. But I do feel, even after now thinking about it for decades, that one day we will resolve this. We have not resolved it yet, and I do not think that we will need to imagine there's a consciousness field that we tap into, that there's something else beyond the physical. I really do feel strongly that when all the dust settles, consciousness will be a quality that just emerges when you've got particles in the right arrangement moving in the right patterns. Right, so no collective consciousness, no tapping up to any spirit world, it's just electrons and different chemicals in your brain that yeah. creates your world. Yeah. You know, one of the ways people have traditionally studied their consciousness is to perturb their consciousness. Yes. And so a couple of years ago, I went uh, down to Costa Rica and drank some ayahuasca, which is a plant medicine. And, it, you know, it definitely perturbed my consciousness. Yeah. And, you know, people have all these experiences and a lot of people have had these experiences. Now, some people feel, feel like they're talking to spirits and entities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if it's because of my scientific training, but when I come back, I'm pretty sure that I was having an experience in my brain. Yeah. And, and, and that's why a lot of people say, you know, people to be scared of like a psychedelic is like you're scared of yourself because it is you. Now, of course, it's altering your brain chemistry in ways that you wouldn't normally do, but that's the way I feel about it. Other people feel differently about it. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I agree, I, I agree with you 100. And I know you recently talked to Joe Rogan about some of your own experiences, <laughs> yeah. which probably have millions of views right now, so I'm not outing you. Right. But I mean, that also helped you because you had that experience. And I know Richard Dawkins has traditionally said, I will not smoke the DMT, I will not touch anything, but I'm not going to, and it doesn't work, and it doesn't matter. But you have a little experience, yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, and, and, and I came out of that in exactly the same way that you did. In fact, it confirmed, rather than made me question my previous views, because all I did was very modestly change the chemistry for a brief period of time that was going on inside of my brain, and that slight change in chemistry yielded a pretty radical change in conscious experience. If consciousness was out here, you would think that there'd be a consistency to it that would transcend any small perturbation to the particles coursing through your brain. But that's not what happens. So to me, it just makes it even more obvious, even more intuitive, 
that all it is is particle motion through this structure and that's what conscious awareness is. I had a really rough night in Amsterdam about 10, 12 years ago before this show happened, before I knew about plant medicines, because yeah. I had no experience and I, you know, I ate a bunch of raw mushrooms by the canal and then barely made it back to the hotel room. I honestly cannot imagine if I wasn't in that room in some safety or I would have been, I probably had a very traumatic experience. But over time, I actually realized that taking these things in the right ceremonies, they teach me a lot about myself. Some of the conclusions that you came up to this book that, you know, it's it's special to be here. We should be grateful for this time, tra- cherish yeah. this time, make the most of it. Yeah, it's finite, but that's actually a good thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's you- funny though, my, my, my experience in Amsterdam could almost be word for word, you know, what you were what describing. And so I guess maybe it's quite common. I think as a yeah. first time yeah. for someone that uses their brain as much as you did or maybe I did in the past, yeah. it's so foreign because yeah. it's throwing things at you you've just never experienced before. I think you said you saw multiple versions of yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I was I just didn't know what I don't know if I was ever going to come back. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that happens. Yeah. I've had a few of those in ayahuasca where I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to make it back. Yeah. But they say there are there are no bad trips. You are just learning at a rate you are not accustomed to. No, 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 and no. There that, are bad trips. You think man. so? Yo, my God. Well, but but I don't know. I, I define bad Sample size as, of as, one, being, as being so terrified yeah. that you don't know whether you're going to pull through. And you, yes, learning, I agree. But I wouldn't consider that ordinary learning at a different pace. It was a categorically different kind of learning. Do you think you might have taken something away from it? Oh, I did, I okay. did. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I, well, number one, I, I, I don't wanna ever do that stuff again, you know, <laughs> but, but number two, you know, this physicalist view of consciousness is challenged by many people. And look, I don't mean to say that this is a done deal, right? It could be the case that at some point in the future, there's a discovery of the consciousness field. We can tap into it, we can measure it, and I'd be thrilled if that were the case. So I'm not dogmatic about this, but everything that I've seen was confirmed by this one little experience. So I'm not saying my belief is based on this experience, but it fits in perfectly that all it is is the materialist, physicalist view of stuff organized and moving under quantum mechanical law. You don't need anything else, and when you fiddle with it, it changes the experience. Yeah, and there's some great studies going on with Imperial College London here. They do a lot of amazing studies with fMRIs, and they're actually watching to see what happens with the brain uh, yeah. with all these chemicals. And they used to think that it actually would be more active, but they've actually find that it's less active. And it's almost, the analogy I have is that the conductor of an orchestra is no longer there. So and it allows it to. It's it to kind of play out in right, different ways right. where it normally wouldn't allow itself to play out, which means a lot of times you can confront maybe sometimes repetitive destructive behaviors and look at your alcoholism or depression or anxiety or smoking in a different way. Um, And they're finding that it actually has some positive reinforcement on these sides of things. That's interesting. Because it allows you to look at something from a different perspective. So um, I'm not a proponent. Um, I don't have any uh, skin in this game, but I would just say that even the bad trips, sometimes there's some type of knowledge there. Just why a near-death experience or a loss of a loved one sometimes can allow you to, to, to look at life differently. Absolutely, absolutely. But I'm not saying we should go to Amsterdam right now. Right.